guys, Nadeska Academics and Wayno back here on The Struggle. Let's do it with you guys. Every day. Nah, you What's get so up, irritated bro? that I'm just gonna keep saying this because you get irritated for no reason. Whatever. I'm mad bright today. I know. Act for once got my memo. What memo was that? That we're going bright? I'm gonna light this shit up today. Yeah, how y'all feeling though? What's up, Act? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. How you feeling? I'm all right, man. I can't complain. It's supposed to be a rainy day, so I'm trying to keep my, my energy up. You know what I mean? Are you one of those people that feels the rain in your bones and shit? <laughs> nah, you know, nah, it was nah, just nah. like a Harlem. Anytime he talks, I just hear this nigga like, like he might not say, I'm about to go get some money today, but that's all he's thinking. <laughs> he's... The way this nigga talks. Nah, I'm not one of those people, but like, you know, rain just makes you a little bit more lax than your day, so. Mm. You know, especially when you're inside a building. What are you doing today? <laughs> what am I doing? Plopping trees? There ain't no trees in, unless you go to the central. Working all day. I got a lot of shoots here. I got a lot of shoots at Apple. Staying busy. You know what I mean? Right. Getting a lot of money. <laughs> you know, let's talk. Let's talk some music. Um, a little bit of nostalgia, of course. We're going to do this week in hip hop. So, Watch the Throne turns eight this week. It dropped August 8, 2011. Uh, Jay and Kanye's big collab album, 12 Songs, Frank Ocean, Beyonce the Dream were featured on it. And Mr. Hudson, haven't heard from him much recently, but uh, Roger in the Control Room just said he put out new music recently. Production, of course, by Kanye Rizza, 88 Keys, Hip Boy, Swiss Beats, and others. There were seven pretty big singles from this, including. Otis, No Church in the Wild. Um, album debuted at number one, sold 436,000 copies week one, which was mm. pretty great. Uh, this was Jay's 12th number one album, Kanye's fifth, seven Grammy nominations. Uh, this was like an event when it dropped. I remember going to the listening session at the Museum of Natural History here. It was super dope in the planetarium. <laughs> Saw Beyonce up close for the first time. Uh, did this album age well for you guys? Yeah, while this when this album first came out, I didn't like. Um, I had a certain perception of what I wanted mm -hmm. from Jay Z and Kanye, which I thought it was gonna be like all soul samples and just Blaze was gonna do everything and be some old <laughs> Rockefeller shit, but it wasn't. But um, as this album went on, I started to consider. I say like within the last like two three years, I started to consider it a classic album. Like just going back, every time you listen to it, it gives you the same exact like impact. Uh, that it did when it came out. So, like, I really fuck with this album. Especially Otis. I mean, Otis is like, that's a classic moment within itself. Remember Funkmaster Flex played it for like three hours straight? <laughs> yeah. I think that ruined it for me. You think I it ruined it for you? Of course it ruined it for me. I was, I was tired of this shit. I think he played, he played that three hours straight, he but like I think also straight. he played like when the, I think he had like the exclusive preview of the whole shit, and you had to like listen to radio, and I forgot how over I was of radio. I remember him playing this shit, and I was like, yo, this is so overhyped. Like, I'm so done with it. Just because, like, he was dropping 3,000 bombs on every song. Oh, yeah. And I, f I feel like this album has aged really well with time. Mm. Because at the moment, like, may again, maybe uh, just how I experienced it at the time, I was sick of it. Um, this is but like industry academics, right? Yeah, you were still I'm in college, still right? Pre, I'm still pre-industry now. Oh, You're stop it, nigga. You was in college at this time, though, right? W what year is no, this? No. this is 2011. College? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, 2011. Absolutely. What? I graduated 2013. All right, carry on. So, um, no, no. Frank Ocean, you know, I, f I feel like he helped make this album. And, you know, like, it, I think this kind of goes straight into, like, the Frank Ocean, like, little run that he had. But, um, like, at first, I was cool off it. And, I'm, by the way, this has gotten better with time, especially since we got so many trash other collaboration albums. Let's be honest. <laughs> Let's be honest. Like, the other trash, because I used to think, I don't know if this is a classic collab album till we saw what the fuck everybody else was doing. Mm -hmm. And then we're like, yo, this is these things are doing utter trash. Secondly, it's really hard to like um murder the excellence. Some of these joints are amazing songs. Like by the way, you know, they it was great production. Who, who, who? Mike Dean though. Yeah. Mike Dean did a lot of stuff on his Who songs. gonna stop me? Like yeah. Welcome to the Jungle. Like most of these songs like hey, again when niggas in Paris. Exactly. Most of these songs have, you know, like, number one, some of them, they sample other songs that are classic as well. So it already gives you that nostalgic feeling just hearing it initially. But even later, you know, like, some of these songs are just timeless. So, like, I think it appreciated, at least with me in time. But I remember at the time I was like, man, all right, I get it. I looked at, this is how I looked at it when, I, when it first came out. I said, we got Kanye, who's kind of, like, just really popping. Right, and, and you gotta remember. This is 2011. This is right, right off to, of to, um, my, my beautiful, beautiful dark twisted yeah. fantasy, one of the best albums in my opinion ever. 
And honestly, I, I thought Jay was just linking up with him, even though Jay's a phenomenal rapper and taking nothing from him. But Jay wasn't hot like that. You know what I mean? What are you... Hot like that? What do you mean? Like... Kanye was having his moment. Okay. He's still right. a top I nigga feel. in the game, though, at that time. I get it. Yeah. I get it. Like, um... Okay, but you're... Wayne, no, hold on. Wayne is still uh, one of the best ever and still one of the yeah. top niggas. Yeah. But if him and Drake get on joint, Drake is having his moment. And I think it would be like... Let me see if who got with Jay like in like 03 or something like that. You get me like... What are you talking about? I, I, do you I see say? what you're trying to say, but it's just like I feel Wait, like no, their relationship... No, no, I see what you mean. No, no. It's just that their relationship is a little different. This is definitely a moment for Kanye to Yeah, if, we, if to we're going down the, the top five hottest artists mm -hmm. in like that year, I don't think Jay's on that list. And that's the only thing I'm saying. Of course, I'm not knocking his talent. Right. I'm just saying Kanye was going through his moments, so when Kanye linked up with Jay... And of course, this is after all the Big Brother, all that bullshit. We, like, I really wasn't expecting too much because I don't really like collab albums like that. At least even, <laughs> even preceding this. I still don't like collab albums like that. Nah, you're right. Um, but I'm gonna, you, wanna, you want that Drake and Future shit, though. Hell no. You know? I thought you, nah, hell no. <laughs> if it's not Drake and Chris Brown, I don't even want it. But when it came to this, like, I wasn't that hyped on it. And also, I just felt Ye was having this moment. I don't. I didn't feel he needed to do an album with Jay. And I know that's so sacrilegious because everybody sees Jay as God. But I'm like, the fuck do you need to do an I album with this nigga? I wonder if a lot of people share when that you're, when, when, when you just gave you just gave us mad classics, yeah. of course. Um, but you don't think Kanye really wanted this? Like it was no, a no, moment, a career it. moment no, for him? I don't feel like he's like, all right, Jay, let me make this is one of the, no, no, mean, of you mean? Why would you do it? It's one of the best moments in hip hop ever. It's one of the best moments. It's one of the best okay, moments. Okay, it turned out to be music. one of the best moments. But when niggas having a moment, what? they don't go to get the nigga that's not the nigga at that moment. Not the nigga. nigga. He's always the nigga. What are you talking Stop about? It. Stop it. What are you, Bro, you're what are you a talking fan. about? It's like not about, it's not about me being a J fan. It's not about... It's Jay-Z, the it, best it, rapper. Yo, what do you mean? There's it, never a okay. time for you not to get him on something. There's never a time not to. Yeah, but... But in what? that year before this, we're not thinking about Jay. Let's Who's we? Who do we quantify as we? I would say the majority of hip hop. We're not thinking nah, about Jay like bugging. Do your peers feel this way? I don't know if you could speak for the majority of hip hop. We'll let the viewers like uh, weigh He's in. But I, like at the time you were in college, you, all of your friends felt the same way. Bro, yes. Like like again, again, again niggas is nineteen yeah, yeah, yeah. and twenty years old. They're nineteen years okay. old. Listen, listen. Curious, they're, they're, they don't. They, this is a that's different point of view. Like, you know what? A different point of view. If Jay drops some shit, like like again, it'll probably be great. But niggas ain't really like. It's not that energy anymore. It's not that time. It's not like his time. We're not talking about that. We're, We're talking not talking about, about now. We're talking about 2011. 2011, too. It was his time. He still was the top. He's still the best rapper in the game. What's the last project you dropped before this? We mean, what's the last project? What does that have to do with anything? Because, because. What does that have to do with? It was I'm, Blueprint 2 I'm, and it was American Gangster. I'm putting, it, that. I'm, I'm putting it in context that it was Kanye's moment. Brother, and okay, when right now, all right, moment, right now. And when Lil niggas Wayne, have their moment. Quick, Lil Wayne, right. Lil, right now, Lil Wayne. Even though, no, is Lil Wayne the top nigga like he used to be? No, is he one of the best rappers ever? Yes, yeah, so if he did an album with Drake right now, we wouldn't care. Like, we'd be like, oh, that nigga ain't hot right now. See, I think you're missing the whole point. I'm not, I'm not saying that it wasn't dope or people didn't enjoy the moment and it also didn't make sense. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying it was that time, 2011, right? Niggas was looking at what is Kanye going to do, right? It was more about what Kanye is gonna do more than oh shit, what is Jay gonna do, right? It was cool that he did that. He did that, but to be honest, like if Kanye, if like, Kanye dropped another solo album, niggas would have loved it too. Yeah, but look again, I he, continue. Of course, I he created another Kanye moment. One of the greatest artists of all time, not one of the greatest just rappers. Period, right? So I was curious to see as a producer what he was gonna do with one of the greatest rappers of all time. Period. Like, lyrically. I wasn't looking at it that way. It's an interesting perspective, though, and I want to know if a lot of people agree with you. Yeah. Like, they look, they Let's find were out. looking at it you yeah, know, I, that way. I, I, if listen, you guys could weigh The overall point is that I feel like like okay. Kanye was so I don't much hear a from, nigga but, that then he ain't really needed that. But I don't want to hear from niggas mm. who's 19 right now because they was 10 when that shit happened. Well, I mean, everyone's entitled to their perspective, right? It's just I the guess. first time I'm, I've never considered it like that. But hey. We're talking to academics. <laughs> yo, let us know if you guys felt the same yo, way. Now I'm super curious. Y'all yo, really like blur the time. I'm like, not. I said I understand your moment, perspective. Yo. No, it kind of like, was certainly. Yo, just just I like it, just like if 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 Drake or uh, let, let's get Drake out of it. Say Travis does. Say Travis does an album, I don't know, Rocky or something like that. It's Travis' moment right now. No, you but get you me? can't compare Travis and, and Rocky. Yeah, and you can't compare Travis and Rocky to Kanye and Jay Z. I, I, 
I get that, mm -hmm. but I'm trying to do it on a micro level. That's right. what I'm trying to get you to understand. Well, this was in like, micro. again, what people were, who people were focusing and caring about at that time, straight yay. I, but it was dope that he. I that guess. Moment. All right, everybody. I guess. Please, uh, yeah, let us know in everyday struggle. This weekend, but let's. On <laughs> Twitter now, I mean, in I said it was a struggle. <sighs> yeah, but our Twitter is you still. The sh <laughs> <laughs> Just keep it moving, man. Jessica. I'm this week in hip hop, you know what else happened? Plies dropped his debut album, The Real Testament. So that was August 7, 2007. 15 tracks, features from Akon, Tank, T Pain, produced by Drummer Boy. Um, insane? Insane. Sorry, I didn't want to say that incorrectly. Uh, singles included Shorty and Hypnotize. So this sold 96,000 copies first week, debuted at number two. All right, so, um, Ak, what were your impressions of this album when it dropped? Were you looking forward to this one or? <laughs> to Plies, his yeah. first prize. Honestly, I only knew this shit off the singles. And and again, like, mm. I didn't really, like, the, I love the, it. The, the singles for this shit gave, like, a great impression. Mm -hmm. But, like, listening to this shit, I was like, all right, cool. At least at the time. You know, I think understanding it over time kind of bled into, like, also Plies speaking a lot. And when Plies spoke a lot, he gave a lot of context to a lot of these records. So at first, when Shorty came on, like, every... If you were at least 10 when Shorty dropped and you care about hip-hop, you remember a specific time, specific girl... Specific, yeah, at least 10. At least, <laughs> at least, at least if right, you were now, at least 10 your, years old. What was your moment? Let's hear it. They don't really who moment. It was just that, like... Just no, no, no. For me, music marks time. Like I know exactly. So you just some of the Shorty. things, huh? You remember Shorty from this? One. Um, a hundred years. I connect that with him. I'm um, telling a lot of st about the story with his brother and shit like that. And the other shit was like this whole like goon, this goon shit, which I never really ever we connected that. plies with that. And then when he started doing interviews and shit like that, I was like, let's just go back to Shorty plies. To be honest. All right, wait, no can you speak All right, so why I'm never a, a, a person who buys, uh, or yeah, the person that buys, because I brought this CD, buys albums off of singles, and I perceived the, his music a certain way because of Shorty. The person who told me to listen to this album was Beanie Siegel. Hmm. He's like, yo, you should fuck with Plaza's album. I was like, really? I, I didn't think that he would listen to it, right? For me, and you know we have our critically acclaimed shit and all that, to me this is a streets classic, okay. like for the streets, because Running my mama crazy, goons lurking, keep it too real, hundred years. I know you working like on the surface level. That's when people were still putting out singles to kind of draw people in, so that they could give them the real them. And this album was like OD. Like if you if you listen to this album, I don't know how many people did, but like the, a lot of people's perception of the plies is uh, what's that song he had? Uh, the what's that fucking song? Ran down, ran off on the plug twice. Remember um, what's Rich Carlton? Chris Carlton. So remember, he was going viral and all of that shit when he was doing that dance and everything. A lot of young kids might perceive is that as plies, just him being some funny guy or some character talking in the car. If you listen to this and then his album after this, he made some great music at this time. Okay. So I really love this album. But yeah, him and Ty's with Akon as well. Yeah, I only listen to the singles off this shit, to be honest. We know academics. We know. All right, man, should we, should we get into uh, uh, verses right now? So this week in hip-hop, uh, Ross also dropped his debut album, Port of Miami. So that was 13 years ago, which is so crazy. Right. Of course, the sequel is coming this Friday, so we'll talk about that next week. Um, so for verses, let's start with Gold Roses. So this is Ross featuring Drake from Port of Miami. Sure. Anyone go first? I would like for academics to go first. Okay. <laughs> What's the... Uh a uh, checklist for this shit. But, um... Port of Miami 2? Or the original? No, the, the original. About? The original. Um, honestly, like, again, I first heard about... What was the first song I heard about Ross? Oh, we on Verses yeah. right now. Like, We're talking about Verses, not the album, right but now, I have the bro. checklist if you Wait, really we not doing... It. No, we on Let's Verses next right week. now, bro. All right, whatever. Okay. Wait. <laughs> Who had the best verse Who had the best verse on Rick Gold Ross Rose? featuring Drake. Bro, stop asking dumb questions, man. Come on, it's Drake. Come on, Drake. I why thought we were talking about we were supposed to talk about Puerto Miami. Why does Drake? Huh? Why does Drake have the best verse? Why? Yeah. <laughs> that threw me off guard because I'm like, this is so self-evident. But you know, by the way, you know, cre credit to Ross, but um, you want to talk like, about the album and said you no, just no, missed the premium Drake, we had. Drake sets the tone of the track. Okay. I feel like 
Number one, when you're on a track with Drake, usually he steals the spotlight. Let's be honest, multiple examples. We don't even have to get into it, honestly, I want me to. But um, on this particular track, I feel like he kicks it off with setting tone, and like he's kind of like almost lightly like like storytelling a little bit. And yeah, I just fuck with his verse a little bit more than Ross. He didn't watch Ross. It's not like Ross. I, Ross hangs with anyone mm -hmm. when it comes to rapping, but here I felt like Drake just you know kind of he nudged him for the uh, better verse. I disagree. I disagree. I like Ross's verse better. Do I do I I do like Drake's verse. It's just you know what it is when I hit when I hear you rap mm -hmm. and then you start singing at the end. It just always throws me off. You know what I mean? Like it <laughs> it always throws me off when we talking about verses, right? When we talking about who has the better verse mm -hmm. because yes, it, it's a dope record overall, but verses I felt like Ross went in more than Drake did. Okay. So I go with Ross, and I think Port of Miami is gonna be fire. Two, How many songs right? would you say that, yeah, I wonder that you would even say Drake didn't have the better verse on? One or two? Well, I think this could be debatable. I think there's a lot of times where he's on, like, fucking problems. That's debatable. Mm -hmm. You get me? Him, you know, ASAP Rocky did a great verse on that. You have Kendrick who did a great verse on that. And, of course, Drake as well. You know, him and 2 Chainz, a lot of people usually say he has a better verse on, like, Big Amount, but you really listen, listen to 2 Chainz. Like, 2 Chainz is really hanging with him, right? Yeah. Like, sometimes people get caught up in the name and just the thought of, oh, it's Drake. So I think there's a bunch of debatables. Okay. There's debatables and there's washed. Mm. I don't know if he's gotten washed. I can't think of anything off the top of my head. In terms that of washed. Drake has gotten washed? Like, washed. Like, I think this is debatable. Like, like, like you yeah, say, you yeah. saying Ross, you saying Ross, I'm like, I like Ross verse too, so I, I yeah, can't, I, I, I'm not going to be sitting here like, what you talking about? Yeah, I wouldn't say that there's like, a, damn, something that Drake just, yeah. I, now, I, I could list a bunch, of, a bunch of songs that Drake washed other niggas. We know. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, everything okay. Drake's on to you. All right. right. Like, Maybe with Lil uh, Baby. I'm good at my, like, all right. most of the singles. Okay. Baby. Um, all right, how about this one? So this is Baby from Lil Baby and Da Baby. Uh, first single from QC's upcoming compilation album produced by Wheezy. Who had the best first? The Baby. The Baby who's having an MVP. Is, would it be Rookie of the Year or would he be MVP? I say, oh, yeah, yeah I, I say he's, he's, he's in the running for both. But I think that The Baby had, like, the better verse on here. Like, I, the thing is, is, like, all right, The Baby and Little Baby, we knew the song was gonna be called Baby, you know what I mean? <laughs> but um, the baby, I just think that he's unstoppable right now. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean, as, as far as how he's attacking lyrics, like he's unstoppable, so I gotta go with the baby. I'm going with uh, Lil Baby on this one. Again, I'm gonna give him that, that edge for the tone setter. But I do think, you know, I, I think, so here's the difference and the distinction in style. With the baby more audible, you could kinda hear, like you could hear pretty much everything he's saying. A lot of people, I feel, sleep on Lil Baby because there's, like, that little light slur, like... No, he can rap. We know that he can rap. Though. Yeah, but but I think a lot of shit he says go un underappreciated because of that. Because he, it, it feels like he's getting his raps just, like, because of that slur, in a melody. Mm -hmm. You get me? So I think people be like, yo, all right, cool, whatever he just said. Then they hear the, the baby with clear, like, punchlines or whatever the case is. Then they go with the baby... The baby, but I'm going with Lil Baby. Okay. So you like this song better than what was it, the one we talked about yesterday with Migos, Gucci? You guys seem lukewarm on that. I think it was I like weight on it, so we like this one better? Yeah, I like this one. Absolutely, I like this one. Okay. I like this one. And also, it, it felt like, you know, it felt like both of them kind of knew, like, all right, we have, this is the battle of the babies, like, literally, all pun intended. It's a, and I felt like they, they had a different approach. Plus, I feel like this also was Lil Baby song. With, with, with the, the song we discussed yesterday, sometimes it's too many chefs in the kitchen. You have Gucci. Or but they all going back and forth. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, it doesn't feel like there's a, yo, it doesn't feel like it's a feature. It just feels like everybody just drop a verse and we call the song. All right, we got one more for verses. So this one is Bang from Conway featuring Eminem. So this one dropped in mid-July. It's from Conway's upcoming album, God Don't Make Mistakes, who had the best verse. Okay, all right, so I love the way Conway starts this off. I think Con Conway has the better verse, but like Eminem, his, the, like when, his, when the, the beat switches and it kind of transitions, Eminem like kills it at the end, but it just takes a little bit too long. Mm -hmm. And I just be feeling like Eminem be using the cheat code. Like, all right, you do, if, if we doing 16s and we doing 24s, then do a 24, do a 16. 
don't go do 45 fucking bars at the end hmm. of my record trying to drown me out of it. P, you, this is not the first time this has come up on this show. It's not. But I mean, if you put it out, can we feel a way about it? Do you I think mean, you wanted to go back and change it? This is always nah, going to be a debate. I, I don't, I, I don't know, but I, I like, I like Conway more in it. But, I, but I'm not discounting Eminem's verse. Like Eminem's verse is is very dope. It just mm. takes a, a bit to get to the dopest part of the verse. You know what I want to know, know so feature like, etiquette, man, from rappers. I want to do some interviews on this. Like, how you feel when this shit happens to you? On I tell track? you, what you got to do is, well, and I just say this from a management standpoint, is you don't let nobody know who's on the on the record, uh -huh. right? Depending on if you want to be a record with niggas that's just rapping, mm -hmm. just send them the beat. Don't send them your verse, none of that shit. Just send them the beat, let them go ahead and see what you get back. Okay, so they should always go first and then you decide how long your verse should be? Nah, I mean, you might already have your verse, but like you just send your shit in, like send them their shit, and then when you get it back, then you make your decision if you're going to go back in or not. Feature etiquette. Uh, easily Eminem. Easily. Easily? Why easily? In terms of all of these, I would say this is the one I was like, I'm gonna easily give it to. Him. Uh, I'm gonna say easily. Um, not only did he rap longer, but I don't think thought, I didn't think the the first half of his verse was weak at all. I mean, honestly, anytime you you get Eminem talking that greatest shit, you know, like he started comparing himself to the Bigs and everybody else, and you know, he then makes a distinction. I, like I feel like this is Eminem with an edge, like with a chip on his shoulder. You know, he starts saying, "Yo, don't compare me to the Iggy's of the world," and I just felt like he. Did his, I feel like he said something. That's one of the biggest things with him. You hear him rapping and be like, yo, yo, this thing's rhyming like a motherfucker, man, but he ain't saying shit. Thought he was saying some shit. He's saying some shit so, on So for that, and then even like with the, I'm not going to penalize a man because he rapped longer. It ain't even his song, so he ain't set the other nigga up. The other nigga probably set him up to do his thing on a song like this. So I'm going to say, um, um, I thought it was easily. I, it doesn't mean that I think that um, Conway's like verse was trash or nothing like that. But you know, I, th I thought M stole the show on the show. You know what this kind of what well, kind of reminds me of like when Pusha and um, Hov did Drug Dealers Anonymous and like Pusha's verse is crazy, but then Jay just like takes another like three minutes on the whole song and kind of drowns the whole shit out. But now M M did kill it. But I, I like the way Conway set the tone how, how access set the tone. Yeah. All right. At least you guys agree on something. All right, um, so today's fast break artist is Shorty Shorty. He's from Baltimore. So he came up as a member of a group out there called Peso da Mafia. Uh, they dropped a project called Never a Drought in June 2018. And after that, Shorty Shorty decided to go out on his own. He dropped a solo project called Captain Hook in December 2018. A couple standout tracks. The biggest one for him is Bituary. He also has another one called Voicemail. Uh, for influences, he cited people like Wayne, Wiz Khalifa, Fetty Wap, and Rich Homie Kwan. Gotten a lot of love from Wiz people like O3 Greedo and DJ Mustard. So right now, Bituary has over 28 million views on YouTube and counting, and in July, he dropped a remix to it featuring A Boogie and Wiz. How do you guys feel about Shorty Shorty? I really, by the way, I, I think Captain Hook, you know, which I believe only has like nine songs or so. Mm -hmm. um, I thought it was a really good project, especially from, it's the first time I've ever heard of him. Mm -hmm. I heard of him from someone who's my intern and she, she put it on and actually she had the song like Bitch in my playlist and yes. I was like, mm -hmm. I was like, oh my God, what the fuck <laughs> is this, right? But I listened, I, I was in Florida for some business shit and I'm driving around and I'm with her. She puts it on and we're listening from front to back. And I have to be honest, there's no joints on here. I was like, man, next. Or like, what the fuck is this? I think he has a pretty unique style coming out of Baltimore. Um, of course, Bituary, that's a hit, but you listen to songs like Voicemail, he has like the, just this unique pocket that he fits in most records mm -hmm. that I think he's, like, if Bituary doesn't end up being like the big single that gets him on Billboard, like the ransom for like Lil Tecca, he has a lot more that he's going to do. I compare him, well, as soon as I listen to him, I'm like, this is like the little kid from Baltimore. Like, I instantly compare him to Lil' Kid. Lil' Kid is so distinct, voice, so right. unique. Um, again, and I'm looking at the influences, I'm saying, who do, like, all these niggas, I don't think they talk like this. <laughs> because if you listen to the record, no way they talk like this. But it's kind of like that squeaky, that, like, it, it's it's weird, but it's unique. Mm. So I really enjoy it. Um, again, I think it's really interest in how he push it together. Well, I'm gonna have to take some more time on uh, on Shorty Shorty. Uh, I listened to Captain Hook. 
I couldn't really like catch it. His voice really throws me off. Why? Like Little Key's voice is kind of throws me off too. But I like Little Key's production better or something like that. Um, I'm a dig back in on on Shorty Shorty shit. Some of the records was cool. A, a few more than was cool. I wasn't feeling too much. But I see that he's making moves out here with the Bituary record. You know what I mean? But I I, I got to do some more digging. Yeah, that Bituary record also lightweight. Um, if you are familiar with. YB in the mirror, he has a song called Bounce Out with that. Yeah. Like, it kind of, like, when I first heard it, I'm like, wait, is that the, but, but it's just like it's a the, the, small the, the, part. Yeah, yeah, the, 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 yeah, exactly. The, yeah. But, um, again, I think he's next up. I think he's next up. I don't know if he's, like, a freshman next year, but I look at him, Keed, Tekka, and a few others who are kind of, like, bubbling. And I'm like, this is, even though we're still in the freshman class that just came out, but a lot of these niggas are moving fast. Like, the baby, we could argue. He's out of here. Yeah, the baby and, the right. gun, baby and gunner, like, yeah. these niggas already have assumed, they're not freshmen, right. really. They've assumed their position in really the game. I look at these guys as, once they get that hit, we'll be talking about them just like those artists as well. Yeah, I think what I like, what I, do, what I will say that I do like about Shorty Shorty is, and a lot of the artists of today is like, there is no like definitive sound of where they're from. Mm. So it's like Baltimore, you assume that they got to sound a certain way, or even like New York or Atlanta, like even Key, like Key to me doesn't sound like Future. He doesn't sound like Gunna. He's just a different sound from where he's from. So I like that everybody's coming up with their own kind of unique sounds. Like it's arguable that people use a lot of the same type of beats, right. but as far as sound and the sounds that a lot of these new kids is coming with, they got their own shit. So salute to Shorty for that. All right, go check out that project, Captain Hook. Um, before we get to some more music, let's do Big Facts or Ooh. BS. Uh, so today is courtesy of Lenny S. He's um executive over at Rock Nation. Damn. I really like this one. I don't know if Axe ever been to a listening session, so I don't know if he right. can have input. But he says, people don't listen to albums at album listening sessions. They're damn near pointless. Wayno. They're absolutely, unequivocally pointless. Like, they make no fucking sense Big nowadays. Facts. Like, I think that... They're just like small meeting, they're like industry meet and greets with wings and like finger foods and free liquor. Right. And and it's like, the problem is that artists, they want to bask in their moment where they have like people in there and everything paying attention to them. But then it's like, it becomes this talk session and people is drunk. Mm -hmm. So they start saying, yo man, could everybody be quiet? And then they get quiet for like five seconds and then they start talking again. So it's like yeah. listening sessions are... They've become pointless. I think that if you want to do a listen session, have some sort of like uniqueness to it or have some sort of like, I wouldn't say theme, but have something that makes it a little bit more distinct of how cold Try did. something different. For yeah. Born Sinner, right? For Born Sinner. Got you down or... in the theater, put on the headphones, yeah. and you were like really listening to the project. Like I think artists need to just rein in the expectations. It's like Wayno said. Yeah. I saw Kid Cudi, and again, a lot of these artists, like I love them. I love Cuddy. I'm a huge Cuddy fan, but I remember going to a listening he had in New York a few years ago, and it's like Wayno said, you invite a bunch of people who sort of work together, they had a long day, alcohol's flowing, everyone's gonna be catching up. That's just life. That's how humans are gonna do. Yeah. Cuddy got so tight, I think he asked him to quiet down a couple times, and then he basically almost threw the mic and stormed off the stage. And I love him, but I was like, come on, what do you expect? Like, yeah. what else would you do in that situation? I don't know. Have you been to a listening session ever? Nah, that's some industry shit, and I don't plan on ever going to one. Um, honestly, uh, it, from everyone I've I've heard describe it, sounds like he's telling the truth. To be honest, Absolutely. I mean, like, it's a social event, right? But a, a, like any anything where there's too many industry niggas like around, like I never think they're actually getting some shit accomplished. But even just people, even I, if I it was just though. fans, you, like, look. So at every one of those events, especially where you are in your career, where, like when I was younger, even though everyone else was getting drunk and talking, I would sometimes be in the corner listening because I'd have to come back and write like the early review of like Port of Miami too, like here's what we heard kind of thing. But just if you get a bunch of humans together and they get drunk, like what do you think is going to happen? Right. Yeah, well, I think he's given the industry perspective. Nobody gives a fuck if they care about your album or not. Like on, on a fan perspective, like, Sometimes it's very useful when whoever goes to a listening session, right? Whether it's a game listening session, that's how a lot of people got info. Yo, game is talking about this, and yeah. people tweeted it out, like you know. But I he think had it a little bit more intimate because it was in a studio. It was actually right. in a studio, and he had like niggas in there that like wanted to hear it, as opposed to like and my fault to cut you off, keep your thought because I do want to hear what you got to say. But it's like you invite everybody from every label, you invite everybody from every publication, right. and then like yeah. These are people that we haven't seen. They're trying to talk to us because everybody wants something from... Like, honestly, I give myself an exit before I enter. 
because I know what it's gonna be every time. And a lot of times I just don't go to the to the listening session because I would rather just be a fan mm -hmm. and just walk in like, I, I mean not walk in but just listen to it. Like I I, I didn't want to go to Corday's like listening session. I wanted to just put my headphones on right. and zone out. But my fault. Go ahead. Act. No, well I was just saying like I've seen a lot of. Um, info would get like leaked, like whether it's like a day or two before the project's mm -hmm. dropped, and and it will be someone that listening. And again, I, his perspective is of if I'm an artist, I I threw this event, and I invited all these people. Mm -hmm. It don't look like they're there for the music. Right. You get me? But I know if you're not there and you're just a fan, mm -hmm. right? You don't really care how that experience is. Yeah. Sometimes you get like some really valuable tidbits, like yo, oh shit. I should really go check this out because so and so is on a record, or so and so is this and so and so on a record, or right. yo, they're finally talking about this and that and a third. Like I think, shit, I've seen like listings happen, and again, I'm on Twitter like every Twitter nigga, right? Mm -hmm. And then I'll see somebody tweet out, yo, yo, Ross has a track talking about blah blah blah, blah. and you're like, oh shit, I want to hear that. Starts a so you know, yeah. it at least gets people interested. Right. Um, the actual event, that's why I would defer to y'all. Like, yeah. I could imagine it's fucking trash. It's like, yeah. but he makes a good point. So for example, Industry I've been are like roach. No, it's fine. You but put it's... Too, too much of them together, it's like okay, I relax. So, <laughs> even <laughs> with so, he makes a good point. Say. No, yeah. I think we know what he's gonna say. Um, gonna um, say. Yeah, I've been to somewhere they're smaller, like at Jungle City. People have had listening. So instead right. of inviting, like you said, every person from every label publication, it's like. 200 people in there trying to catch up you can be like all right 25 people at a time and it could be an all-day thing i just feel like the label and the artists have to have a little bit more foresight and have expectations you know what yeah. i mean lower expectations or look at it as an opportunity like even if people aren't digesting the album fully show them your personality a little bit some of those artists have fun with it they realize what it's going to be so they're drinking too they might be rapping along to all the songs they're yeah. mingling you get to just see their personality and that gets people more interested you just have to like lower your expectations or else yeah. try something different it, well, but I also say this, right? Like, do people really give a fuck about, like, to have that two-day extra scoop on everybody else? Like, it's dropping on Friday. Say say you have the listening session right. on Wednesday. Yeah. I think, and again, this is my perspective, right? If somebody invited me to a listening session, I'm probably not going to, like, fucking go listen to the music. That's what I'm saying. As crazy as They're that sounds. It's I'm crazy. going because, yo, it's a long day at work. I'm going to go there. We're going to chop it up, blah, blah. Maybe like shit. Maybe I even want to chop it up with the artist. Right. But actually consuming the music, I don't feel like a lot of people go there like, oh shit, that's. But they, what I'm... they didn't always. They weren't always like that. That's the thing. They, it wasn't Agreed. always like that. Agreed. I, I could imagine I... before where you were you were probably getting so much so much of a preview. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Before the general public, mm -hmm. that it was really worth being focused on the music. I think now it's like two days. Even. Like Kanye invited like me and like everybody on the on the motherfucking earth to like Wisconsin to go listen to his album. Wyoming. Wyoming, yeah, whatever the fuck that was. And again, at a point I was like, is niggas going to Wyoming to listen to the album or niggas be like, I never been to Wyoming. Yeah. You get me? And I know it's good this is gonna be some niggas shit. Niggas trying to get some cool. Yo, yo, yo yeah. this gonna be some <laughs> shit right here. Kanye got us all out in Wyoming and, and I think people wanted to see that experience. Yeah. More than of it was him like standing in a circle, jumping up and down. Like also, I do like at listenings when artists speak. Some yeah. of them pull up, they chill in their corner by themselves, they, they get drunk, yeah. they're surrounded by their people. It's like a super whack experience for everyone else there. Like when artists get on the mic, and even if like again you're not hearing all of the music, they'll run through a couple of their favorite songs and tell you some stories. Like yo, this is what I was going through. He was yeah. the last person on this. I sent this song back. Like that information I is more helpful and makes you feel a little bit more connected than like just watching them chill with their yeah. boys in the corner. I think that they got to do like two different versions of them. I think like if you want, because it's become more of an event, an event ugh, excuse me, it's become more of an event now. So I think like if you want to have an event, that's cool. Like there's nothing wrong with that, like celebrating your moment. But if you really want people to fuck with your music, like have people come in and listen to it. Like last year when Meek was doing championships, he just asked me like, yo, come to the studio. Play, play me music, I got to hit, you know, hear shit, and then he did end up having an event, but he had people that he was like close to or fuck with come through and listen to the music and then everybody was at the event so that you could appreciate it. But I think like, you just gotta separate the two. If you really want your music heard, keep that shit like close knit. If you wanna have an event, then just know that people not really gonna be listening to your shit like that. They just gonna be having fun. Yeah. I, I look at, listen, again, keep in mind, I ain't go to none of this bullshit because I ain't really with that. But I look at 
listening sessions and like album release parties is one and the same. Like again, you would think like, oh shit, let's celebrate the album release like at a party. I think niggas is there to party. <laughs> like you know what I mean? Again, of, do people have appreciation for that person or maybe that project? Mm -hmm. But I think those events or quote unquote activations that like these motherfuckers like calling it, like. What? Yeah, right. the the environment definitely matters. It's not like a movie. Like, it, like optimally, it would be like a screening to a movie. Mm -hmm. I hundred percent when niggas go to a screen to a movie. Yeah, there's some catching up. Right. Cause sometimes you might see. Yeah, but the movies consumed differently. Consumed differently. Yeah. Like, first, just start turning over music it. In Everybody movies, started getting right? clicky. Like, all right, what up, yo? You know, I fuck with you then. What's up with your your work? What's up with your yeah. Yeah, I don't, yeah. Whatever. I go home at night. Fuck all that. All right, Lenius, big facts. All right, big facts. But there's hope. There's hope. Just right. gotta, you Ain't know. No hope. <laughs> yeah, there is. I, look. We ain't going there. All right, let's go to some quick hits. Unfortunately, so on Tuesday morning, a uh, young Miami of a City Girls was targeted in a drive by shooting in Miami as she was leaving the studio. So, according to TMZ, she told police that the shots came from a car driving behind her with the headlights off and the bullets did hit her car multiple times. So, Miami Dade PD is investigating the shooting but currently have no suspects. So, just really glad that she's okay because that's fucking terrifying. Yeah, that's very whack, man. I mean, um, you know, gun violence is prevalent in many different ways, not only mass shootings, but shit like this. And she's pregnant, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. that could be really bad. So salute to her, you know, that, that she's okay, the baby. And um, what's my man's name from 808 Mafia? Southside. Yeah. Southside, my fault. Southside. Salute to them. I hope that they all safe because, you know, this is no joke. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, she, she's... Like her and Southside been a little bit of drama in terms of Florida recently, but um, I'm hoping this ain't got nothing to do with it. Um, very scary. Like I was hoping one of those situations where it's like, okay, she wasn't even driving the car, but then I see her talking to the police, which means she was definitely in the vicinity or driving, which you know makes it. It reminds you so often that a lot of these you, you see whether it's, and again we're not dumb. Com confrontations or arguments online, they have real life consequences, especially when it comes to hip hop. And there's really close calls. So again, I look at this and I'm like, I hope everybody stays safe, but this is hip hop, it's hip hop. Um, I, I hope Southside takes the pro proper precautions for her and I hope she as well does that. Right. You know what I mean? You might want to chill out with just like moving so freely by yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, all right, on a lighter note, uh, Megan Thee Stallion has confirmed that she's dropping a song called Hot Girl Summer featuring Nicki Minaj and Ty Dolla Sign. That's supposed to come out this Friday. What do you guys think about this collaboration? Uh, Not that it's out yet, but you know what I mean. Seems mutually beneficial here. I actually love it. I love it. I just don't know why Ty Dolla Sign's on it. <laughs> hot Girl Summer. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get me on this. Maybe he's he's, he's he talking can. from the hot boy perspective, from the city. Nah, boy. you don't want to on the Hot Girl Summer. Y'all make a new song. No, city but that's Boy that's Summer. Yeah, y'all do that. But I, I, I'm number one. I'm kind of glad. You, you know, Nicki gets so much bad rap in terms of yo, show me, like show me showing love to whatever. I, I seen her go out of way to show love to Meg Thee Stallion. Meg Thee Stallion clearly fucks with her. Mm -hmm. Seems kind of natural what they're doing and collabing and linking. So I'm excited to see what they do. I'm hoping this is a hit. Yeah. Because sometimes, you know, artists get cool and then they just come up with a song, which on paper looks good, but it's not good when you hear it. So hopefully it's a hit. But um, to be honest, it, I would have just said add the city girls to it. I don't know if everyone fuck with each other. Add the city girls to it and call it a day. And I believe that would be just a smash. But Maybe that's the remix. Assuming Ty Dolla Sign's on the hook. Maybe. He's great on hooks. I'm looking right. forward to this. Nah, he can't be on the hot girl summer hook. He can hang. It's fine. It's mm -hmm. totally fine. Um, all right, so Post Malone's been doing a lot of shows, and recently during a show in New York City, he revealed that his third studio album is coming in September. Every time we talk about Post Malone, we're talking about a hit. Hit after hit after hit. Are you guys expecting anything less on this next project? Hits. Hits. <laughs> hits. hits. Nah, but salute to Post, though. And Dre. I hits, think so. I think he previewed like one of these songs like at the show and even in the low quality on stage performance I'm like <laughs> got another one <laughs> unless it was like he was performing some shit that's like, yeah. Yeah, niggas like Pitbull <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> no he got literally the cheat code yeah. w one thing I am impressed with him and, and you know like I, I do think most artists should envy about him is that like with most projects from hip hop artists you work two singles, mm. maybe three, move on. You let people consume the rest. 
this motherfucker will work eight singles, nine. <laughs> you get me? Because most of those songs, and and it doesn't make his song, his album feel like he's only trying to just hit the billboards. I feel like that's just his art. Like, yeah, all his songs feel pretty natural to him. So, damn yeah, man, that's what's up. Can't knock the talent. All right, coming in September, and lastly, so Westside Gun and Benny the Butcher. Look, we know he's shaking his head. He looks so irritated just now. Now he's excited again. <laughs> um, just announced a Griselda record, some sort of um, collaboration, connection deal with Rock Nation. Uh, so we don't have a lot of details. Still very unclear. But we did see. Of course. Oh, that's why he's smiling. All right, I'm gonna let <laughs> Wayno give you uh, the details. But we did get a. Um, we saw some photos with Jay celebrating with uh, Westside Gun and Benny. All right, Wayno, what do you know? Oh no, nah, so. Um Agency 78, which is a management company ran by uh, hip hop Kayambo Joshua, uh, that he anard Reasonable Doubt, Jay Z's first album, mm -hmm. Big's brother, you know what I mean, hip hop, that discovered Just Blaze, Kanye, all of that. He did a partnership with Agency 78 and Rock Nation to manage West Side Gun and Benny the Butcher. That's what I know. So, That's all thank I know. You, Wayne, uh... But nah, but salute to um, West Side Gun and Benny the Butcher. And I, I mean, I, I just gotta go on record and say, man, like, but between those two, along with Conway, when it comes to rapping right now, I don't think nobody could really fuck with them. Mm. Like, if we talking about, like, just spitting verses, they putting out some of the best hip-hop when it comes to rapping, and they even got act fucking with them, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I, I, I'm proud of these dudes, you know what I mean? Coming from Buffalo, that's that's a big accomplishment. All right, congratulations to them. Yeah. Hey, I, I'm just, listen, I think we've seen some some of these Rock Nation moves recently. I think, you know, was it Rock Nation? And that uh, yeah, Meek with yeah. the Dream Chasers and Rock Nation with Uzi, Rock Nation and Wayne, not Rock Nation and Westside Gun and Ben Butcher. Listen, I, I'm I'm waiting for the I'm waiting to see some shit come out of it. <laughs> like, <laughs> when, when are we gonna get like the Wayne project? Because that I think that last one was just still through Universal. Yeah, I don't think it's like, like I don't know if it's just management. And, and of course, they have a very fluid system where like they do management their label as well. Mm -hmm. Um, to see how everything works out with them. All I know is um. What's her name? I forgot her name. She just left Rock Nation. Um, she's dating Gold Link. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Oh, Justine Sky. Justine Sky. Yeah. And I'm trying to see how long. Uzi been saying Rock Nation money is different. I'm like, okay, but what about that album that comes? <laughs> What's about like, Eternal It Take? That's all yeah, I yeah. care about. Yeah, so I'm, I'm just trying to see, like, <laughs> let's see what happens under their regime. Let's see. Will you go to yeah? the Uzi album listening if of you were course. invited? Are you crazy? Hell no. <laughs> if he's not jumping off like a balcony, the hell am I going to see him? Fair enough. Okay. Not to ask. Academics is not your friend. I just want y'all to know that's very they true. They already know. That's that's, they already that know. is very true. It, it, if I've ever talked to y'all and made y'all feel different, please listen to me. <laughs> He's not y'all. I ain't y'all friend like that. I'll be there, Uzi. All right, <laughs> Thank you guys for tuning into The Struggle. We'll be back here with one more episode tomorrow. See you guys at 12 p.m. <laughs>